The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome to our project site in a flash demo series. While project site consists of several modules to manage your projects from start to finish, today we're actually going to focus on our BIM and 3D model with Trimble Connect. Each Wednesday, we cover a different module of project site within a 15-minute demo. I'm actually going to put the link to our series in our web page in the chat so you could actually watch the previous episodes and register for the next one. Just to start off with, my name is Sean Rogers and I manage our project site relationships and joining me is Jimmy, one of our solution engineers. He, we will actually be your hosts today. So we do actually encourage you to ask questions so please, please feel free to type your questions in the question box and we'll try to get uh, those answers along the way. If we don't get to your questions, we will try to follow up with you individually. Let's go ahead and jump in. All you Jimmy. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Sean, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. So what I have on the screen here is my mobile app, which we'll talk about in a second. So this is a Trimble Connect mobile application to view those uh, those models out in the field. Um, that's one of the applications that uh, that is involved in the Trimble Connect piece. So I will move that over for now. And what you're seeing here is the Trimble Connect application. Um, Trimble Connect. Uh, it's, a, it's Trimble's document storage product with 3D viewing capabilities. So imagine a box, a Dropbox, a Google Drive, uh, but also the added ability to view 3D models such as Revit, Navisworks, uh, those types of files, as well as SketchUp. And Trimble Connect has over 17 million users on the platform. So it's used quite extensively um, throughout kind of Trimble client base. Now, since we're talking about project site, and Trimble Connect um, between the two systems, right? So if I'm on project site, uh, to get to my models of this specific project, you would go to your model link within project site. Also within the tool, which I'll show you towards the end as I, as I show the connection between the two, you can link any record with a, a Trimble Connect 3D model view, right? Um, so that gives the ability for those individuals within project site working on an issue such as an RFI to be able to have the drawing, the documentation, as well as the model uh, information to be able to fix or correct any type of issue, um, which just gives them that ability to have that data uh, right at their fingertips through their desktop as well as on their mobile device. So what I'm at right now is Trimble Connects uh, document storage area. This is where you can store any project related documents. Um, you can also um, load in any of your model files in this system here. Um, with inside uh, Trimble Connect, you have the ability to set different permissions based on different folders, um, as well as manage any files inside of these folders. So within here, I have three different documents. Uh, we do have an integration with Microsoft Office 365. So you have the ability to edit and manage those documents within uh, the web portal here without having to download those documents. All right, so you can set up any types of revisions in here. Um, you can view any kind of history as well as activity involved. Uh, so it's very similar to a, a Google Drive aspect in that sense. Now the permission levels can be based upon individual folders um, as well as individuals in there. So um, with the example here of having different trade partners load in their models in Trimble Connect for you to view them. You can grant them access to a specific folder such as trade partners. And then Midwest Steel or JR Butler can be specifically um, managed at, at that file level. So the, all of these teams can get into this folder, but only Midwest Steel can access this specific uh, folder inside there where they can upload their model file. A couple other kind of settings to point out. Uh, there's a number of notifications that can be set up from a file upload perspective. So as you're managing um, getting those files in the system, you can certainly be notified immediately, or we do notifications in a digest format uh, signified at the specific time uh, within the settings area. All right, so a lot of notification ability there. And then user permissions is based upon um, what you would like them to have access to within that folder structure. 
Okay, a couple other items here before we dig into those files. Got an activity list that shows you all the different activities that are happening inside Trimble Connect from deleting files, as you can see here, syncing projects. Um, so there's a lot you can do and, and be notified of within Connect. There's also the ability to create different kinds of action items, whether that's on a model-based approach or on a document-based approach, uh, but gives you a to-do list here that I can assign out uh, to Darren in this case and give him a due date and track those, uh, those to-dos. Now, within that Explorer, there's the ability to load in those documents and those BIM models, right? And, and to view them, you would just go ahead and click on, and I'll just go ahead and click on my Midwest Steel um, file here. And what it's gonna do is gonna take you over into our BIM viewer where that model uh, will load up. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a steel model, right? And at this point, inside Trimble Connect, I can go ahead and do a lot of things. So I can dra drag and pan and zoom with my mouse. I have my toolbar up top that allows me to uh, select different elements of the model, whether I want to do a single beam selection, right? If I need any of that information around that beam, I can look at the metadata that's pulled over from, in this case, this is a Tecla. Uh, Tecla file, um, so I can do that. I can also add additional properties as necessary. If I wanna select assembly versus just a single item, I can do that uh, to narrow down my, my, my data that I wanna see on that. I can cloud different areas. I can take make annotations, arrows, markups um, to really collaborate upon this model. And then at any point that I want to notify somebody of an issue or I want to keep track of this specific section, I can take a quick snapshot of that section, which we call a view. And this is where you can take these views and you can link them to records and projects. Right? A couple other areas here, you can clip the model, you can add to-dos to the model sections here. And then you can view the model in different kinds of manners, right? Um, different orientations. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add in an additional model. Maybe uh, what I'll do is I'll add a mechanical. So I'll go to my mechanical uh, model and I'll and I'll link these together. And now I can basically create my federated model inside Connect. That's going to show me the steel as well as that mechanical. Um, overlaid, uh, overlaid together. And I still have my same tools, so I can still go ahead and click on these elements. All right, if I want to dig in a little bit deeper on the on the metadata behind the scenes here, I can open up my data table, which allows me to to do more of a grid format, where I can filter and sort uh, the different columns of data that I would like to see, right, as well as the assembly names. Uh, of the elements. And I can manage those columns. And then what I can also do is I can save this to an organizer where I can organize different phases, uh, different elements together. As you see, we've got some tasks, we've got some phases, work packages. Those are all a way to group the model data together to allow you to quickly um, manage that process. Okay, and then we also have the ability to do some clash detection. So if I go to the steel and MEP clash, it's it's the same uh, same two models I had on there, um, but I ran a clash detection test with it based on some parameters that I set, and it's going to go ahead and show me uh, those various items that it's notifying me of. And if I click on one of them, I can isolate those items. I can select this to view and I can see from here that that stringer is running right through that steel beam. So just a quick example of that type of process there. All right. Now, <clears throat> Trimble Connect also has a number of additional add-on pieces that allow you to work with the tool on your desktop. 
um, as well as the mobile device. So while we're talking about the mobile device, let me bring that over. And if I go back to my project list here, I can see all my projects and then I can click on that same project we were in and I can look at those, uh, those documents I can bring up. Uh, for example, that um, this is a Word doc right here on my phone. I can also, like you saw just a second ago, I can load up. Oops, sorry about that. I can load up different views, and it's going to remember my uh, my last accessed area right there in the quick access section. And it loads very quickly. So it's it's built really for mobile. Um, it's very clean, very crisp, as you can see. Uh, same ideas here around looking at objects, uh, bringing in the data that I want to see, as well as annotating, as you can see at the bottom here, creating different views within the mobile as well. All right. And then we do have a couple other pieces here. We have Trimble Connect for mixed reality. So it allows you to use the models in conjunction with uh, the HoloLens. Um, to, to view those and work out in the field. There's the Connect for Visualizer that allows you to create uh, more marketing type videos around those models. Uh, Trimble Connect for Revit allows for pulling in those, those files directly into Trimble Connect. We also have a direct integration with Tecla. And then we have our Connect Sync application. And that gives you the ability to sync those files with your desktop or a shared server at the organization. So here is the sync functionality. Um, and I'm syncing with this project here. So let me just, oops. So the same files right here on my desktop, um, I can just load in a file and I have this set to sync at a certain time, every 15 minutes. And you can do that in different manners. You can do a bi-directional upload, download. Um, you can sync just specific folders and files and you can set different different alerts for that as that process happens. But this allows you to um, really store all of your project files in one central location that can be accessed through Trimble Connect, but it's still going to be stored upon your, um, your server and your shared drives within the organization. So we see a lot of, uh, a lot of companies doing that. And the, the benefit there is you can have outside individuals loading uh, models into Trimble Connect that then are synced directly back into your server um, for that for that tracking. The last piece here is a status sharing tool, <clears throat> uh, which allows you to set, view, and change the statuses of those model objects. Um, and it can be used in conjunction with technical structures. Um, so that's a, another one of those add-on functionality as well. So back to the model here. Um, and the last part I want to show you is those different views. So this list of views here that I've created from my interaction with the model, I can go back into our project site. And if I were on an RFI, for example, and from here, I want to go ahead and link to a model. I can go to my link icon, my model view, uh, it's connected to my specific project here that's connected uh, with the project site project. And that might be a bad example here. Uh, oh, there we go. So here's all my different views. And I'll go ahead and click that stairwell view. And now we have those models, that model linked with this uh, specific record. And I can go ahead and load that on the record level. And then when I want to access this model, if say I'm I'm Jack or Howard uh, coming from Project Site, I simply click on that model and it will redirect me over to Connect, where I can view that information. And then when I click Done, it sends me right back into Project Site. So kind of in this uh, kind of connected construction piece that uh, Trimble's at right now, Project Site. 
and Trimble Connect are slowly merging together into uh, one product where um, here in the near future, the file manager uh, in Project Site will be converted over into Trimble Connect, which allows us for uh, better management of files and better organization and, and good syncing back to uh, any type of server uh, within our, our client base. So right at about 15 minutes here, Sean. So a lot more we could dig into with the model side, um, the file side, but I think this is a good overview uh, for everybody in the audience. And you know, I'll open it up, see if there's any questions. Yes, we actually have a few questions in there, Jimmy. Um, if we could talk a little bit about the Terminal Connect, you know, what solutions can be used to tie the BIM model mm -hmm. to potentially any schedules or any outside uh, products as well? Uh, a little bit more about the Connect to construction. Yeah, when we're talking about, you know, guys out in the field using those uh, scanner devices and total stations and um, uh, wanting, wanting to look at point cloud data. Um, we can certainly uh, load that model, uh, that point cloud data into Trimble Connect to get that visibility there. And the Trimble Connect also has a lot of other applications within the Trimble family that uh, that it works with um, on the uh, you know, kind of the, the work process side, the construction side. And then um, along the lines of converting those files to, to BIM, it's not quite what the tool is used for. It's more taking a 3D model that maybe is built in by the architect and then simply uploading to Trimble Connect to share with the project teams and to utilize it in more of a uh, cost-effective manner, right? Because um, Connect comes with included with project site, so you don't need additional license uh, to have the viewer and to be able to collaborate on that. There was a question from Ben about uh, field status of installed versus delivered to the site or in fab. Um, utilizing the phase approach um, and organizing this data in specific ways, you can uh, set it to to understand if, hey, I've got, you know, this this is phase one over here, or maybe it's, uh, you know, a specific section, and you want to, on the job site, mark off if you have these certain beams here today. Uh, there's a way to set that up so that you can um, organize that data in a manner that when you're on site, you can simply click on that element and say, uh, yes, this one has been delivered. And you can set the status uh, of that element and it will it could change color um, within that, that actual model. Yeah, so and just a, your follow-up question was, was right on. So you can have that set up to either be reviewed, installed, delivered. Those are just the statuses of that specific element within the model. Okay, I think um, I think we answered uh, the questions we had today. And you know, Ben, if, if there's more questions, we can certainly have uh, you know a further discussion uh, and, and kind of talk through those uh, additional pieces uh, you're referencing there. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining us today and asking questions. This has actually been our last uh, project site in the FLAS module. And again, if you uh, look in the chat, I did include a link uh, for all the previous uh, FLAS module conversations that we've had in the past. So feel free to click on that and get a chance to review some of the other uh, videos that we have available. Again, thanks everyone for joining and we wish you a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.